guys welcome back today's video is going to be another uh, art doll video so this little guy is called Onkawi the white ash squirrel so stay tuned and starting off with a resin cast of an original sculpture by me and I've sculpted this out of monster clay molded it in silicon and cast it in resin and I'm starting off by painting around the eyes and the mouth and not the nose this time because I want it to be pink uh, with some black chrome acryl acrylic paint but you can use any acrylic paint you can get your hands on so I hadn't done a squirrel doll for quite a while so um, I wanted to do one and just change up the body a little bit so I refined it quite a lot uh, since my last squirrel doll so I think it turned out really well this time so as usual I gave it a first coat of some good white acrylic paint that has a nice tooth on it so the paint has something to stick to on the slippery resin. And I'm painting the eyes using this Lumiere paint by Jacquard and it has a nice halo blue uh, tone to it uh, and it's a really nice paint and it goes on really thick. Uh, you can use one layer but as long as you use quite a lot of the paint uh, otherwise you can just do a couple of layers and you'll get that coverage as well. So just like all the other dolls that I make, I give them a little backstory, the ones that aren't commissions that is. Uh, so I will read you on Kawi's uh, backstory now. White ash squirrels are quite shy little creatures. They have a very dull coat consisting most of greys and whites to help them blend into the surrounding environment. They are one of the very few creatures that will change colour throughout the winter season where the landscape is covered in snow. The squirrels shed their grey fur in a place of white fur. This helps them better blend into the snowfall. Unlike other squirrels, white ash squirrels don't hibernate. They are active throughout the entire winter season. White ash squirrels are found in the settlement of white ash located in the white tribal lands of Krai, India, but can be rarely found in other areas. Alright, so there's a little backstory. Uh, I, I am trying to do uh, bigger backstories for more of my dolls, but you can check out my blog posts uh, for any previous dolls. I have made stories for them too. Uh, it's at creaturesofnat.com and it is in the uh, Wonder Camera tab. Alright, so painting up the little paws pads of the squirrel and this is also something I have sculpted, molded and cast in resin again and I wanted uh, the pads to be a pink colour rather than black like I usually do. And moving on to the fur that I'll be using. So I'm using this white fur that you've seen me use many many times on a lot of my dolls. Uh, it's just a really great versatile fur that you can do a lot with. And I'm just doing the underbelly of the squirrel with the white this time. So I'll only need to cut out just the whole underbelly part of the pattern. And then I'll be using this really really nice grey fur and it has such a realistic feel to it. Uh, it's a bit strawier than a lot of my other ones so it's not as soft as what I've used before but it is fake fur. Uh, you can see how it's woven on the back there. And this time I'm just cutting out the tail and the two side body patterns. Uh, and then I'll go and run it through the sewing machine um, and I, I prefer using the sewing machine because it's a lot stronger than um, gluing and uh, hand sewing as well and I just don't really like how the gluing has like thicker bits when you stick the uh, fur together, I just, I just don't like that. Okay, so once we've cut those out, I'll pin them fur side together and then run it through the sewing machine. And I will try and capture some sewing machine um, footage. I know someone asked for that in the comments, so I will try and do it. It's just a bit difficult to catch, um, but uh, yeah, I'll definitely try and include that in some of my next videos. And so we're going to flip it the right side out and then we are left with this. So I have the back end open and the head end open and all of the legs open as well. So I can insert the armature and attach all the resin pieces to the armature. So once I've done that, I can then go ahead and sew up all the loose ends using a ladder stitch and the ladder stitch just makes uh, where the pieces are stitched together like a blind stitch so you can't see any of the thread or anything. I also had a question in one of my last videos what I put inside my art dolls and I just use some simple polyfill it's the same sort of thing that you can put in pillows and stuff like that uh, and you just load it up in there so it's nice and firm. 
And I know there's a lot of uh, other different ways of doing it, but this is just how I do it. Uh, I know some people use batting and that sort of sticks together and creates a shape with that, but I don't really like doing it that way. Uh, but you know, each to their own, whatever works for you. All right, so this is what it looks like when the fur has been attached to the head. And I'm not gonna show you this because it's very specific to my type of doll. So I kind of wanted to keep it uh, just unique to my work. Uh, but definitely give anything a try, uh, you come up with your own technique that works just for you and will be unique to your work. And he does have some subtle, subtle striping on his back, but I don't know whether the pictures pick that up. But here he is, what do you guys think? that is it from me today i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any requests you can leave it in the comments down below you can also check me out on instagram and facebook at creatures of nat and i'll see you in the next one bye